Okay, welcome back. Um, we're going to go through the 960 system here, and we're going to talk about in this movie how it all works. Now, in the last film, we kind of summarized, uh, we learned, you know, what, what do you need to download from the 960 website, and what files do you actually need out of all that, and that's really important, because we only need three. There's a ton of templates and things in there, but it comes down to this. You're going to need these three CSS files. The 960.css file, which contains the framework. This is all the meat of the actual framework. And then the next one, which is the reset.css, which takes care of some browser issues. And then finally, underneath that, we have the text.css file, which um, this one is optional. And what this does is it gets it just kind of basically gets rid of the browser default text of Times New Roman and puts Helvetica in there and resizes it. Um, if I'm just mocking something up or if I'm just kind of jamming or experimenting, I will typically throw that in. As soon as I'm working on website design, I take that out and I typically will write my own style sheet for that. So know that this last one is kind of optional in that sense. OK, so how do you work on this and what do you need? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to include all those files in the header document. And then the CSS framework for 960 works like this. You're going to use a series of divs to define these columns. And the first thing we need to do is define a container column. And let's go ahead and write a div tag. And I'm going to say the class. These are done with classes. So the class equals, and this is going to be container underscore 12. And let's go ahead and close that. And this is how that works. Um, basically, if you open up that 960 file, you'll see all this. But container 12 is the convention for the container. If you want a 12 column layout, that's what you're going to use. If I want a 16, I would simply pop that back and say, let's do a 16 column container. Or if you want the optional 24, you would do that here too. So there's three possibilities. So you set up your container first. I'm going to stick with the container 12 in this case. And what we're going to do is between those two div tags, inside the container, you define your grid columns. Okay. So for instance, if I do something like, let's say, uh, let's put a div in here. Let's go ahead and say, these are also done with classes. So class equals, and then in quotes, grid underscore 12. What I have done here, let's close that out, is each column, and it's maybe a little confusing. They're not known as columns. They're known as the grids. So you have your container div, which is the container 12. And with inside that, I have my div class equals grid 12. So this is a column that spans 12, or it's actually a, yeah, it's a grid that spans 12 columns is what it is. Okay. And so like, for instance, if we put, um, we put an H1 tag in there, and within that, we'll call this 960 demo. And let's go ahead and look at that in the browser and see what happened. And if I, whoops, if I go over back here, let's open up that file. Okay, so here in the browser, you can see that 960 demo didn't take up a lot of space, but you can tell that we have something, that container is kind of centered on the screen. This isn't stuck all the way over on the far left-hand side. So let's do something else. Let's go down here. And underneath that, I'm going to put another div. And we're gonna say class equals grid underscore 12. And within that, let's close that out. I'm going to go ahead and I've got some text, some Greek text set up in text expander. So let's do um, the paragraph delineated text here. Okay, there we go. So now I have some uh, Greek text, which you can cut and paste from the web if you want, but it's separated into paragraphs. So now when I go over and refresh that page, you're going to see that here it is, our fantastic one column grid here uh, that just contains some Greek text. So basically, let's come back over here so you can see how this works. If I say grid 12, that means it's going to be a grid that spans 12 columns. If I change this down to, let's say, uh, three, okay, now when I go refresh, you're going to see that that grid now only takes up the space of three columns, okay, which allows me to start putting more in. Let's go ahead and change that to a four. Oh, here, so here's what you would do. If you want to do a two column grid, let's do grid six for that. And then what I'm going to do is grab that entire div and I'm going to copy, drop a line and paste it. So now what I have here, I know there's a lot of Greek text in here, is I have two grid six columns, okay? So this will be an evenly spaced, let's refresh the page, two column layout, okay? That actually spans six columns, but we're gonna, your eye visually is gonna see it as two. So what 960.js does is it starts, it opens the container, and so we have a 12 grid, or excuse me, a 12 column container, and then within that you have your, your grid columns. So the first one was equal to six, and the second one was equal to six. These happen to equal 12. What happens if you exceed 12? Well, let's take the second one here, and let's make this a grid 10 and see what happens. Let's save that and bounce back over. What it's going to do is drop a line, okay? So basically, you have to do a little bit of simple math here and simple addition. Your column layout needs to be it needs to all add up to 12 in the end. So if I want a two-column layout, 6 plus 6 will give me that. So let's go back and change this to 6. 
anything greater than six would force that down a line and make it a seven column grid, which would not fit. Six plus seven is 13, not 12. So I hope that makes sense, but that's basically how you're going to do this. So if I want to set up a three grid layout, uh, let's go back up to the top here. Let's do some new um, columns in here. Let's say div, and I'm just going to say class equals, and we'll call this grid underscore four. So we want a three column layout. I'm going to use three grid fours. And if you can tell why, is four times three equals 12, or four plus four plus four equals 12. Let's close that out. All right, so let's grab this, and I'm gonna copy this over two times. So let's go back down here and down here. And then what I'm gonna write is grid one in this div. I'm gonna write, just so you can see visually where it is, grid two. And then finally grid three down here. And this is just text I'm writing in here. But now you can come back over and see that we have indeed changed this to grid one, grid two, grid three. I have three evenly spaced columns in there. And if you copied a paragraph of text in there, it might be easier to see. Let's go do that. Problem is with just writing a couple words is you don't see the whole thing. So let's uh, let's replace that. We'll just replace each one of these with some text. And go down to grid three. All right, so now let's go back and look. And when I refresh the page, you can see now that indeed I have three columns of text here. These could be images, they could be text, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, the other thing, like visually, if this bothers you, you could come down here and we switched from our three column layout to our two column layout. So I can put things in between. Let's do a div class equals grid underscore 12. So this is going to be a div that will stretch the whole um, the whole width there. Let's close it off. And then what I'm going to do is just drop an HR or horizontal rule tag in there. And so that will give us a little delineation there. And there we go. So now I have a visual delineation. So you can do things like that. So again, that's why you have so many columns up to 12 or 16, even if you're dealing in small chunks like three or four, is it allows you to change between a three column layout, a two column layout. So you can go from odd to even or even a four column layout, something like that. Um, so this makes a lot of sense. Um, if you want to work on images or things like that, it might help to know some exact measurements. We know that 960 means it's 960 pixels wide. But if we go back, let me open a new tab. Let's go back to the 960 website. And what we can do here is I can do the grid overlay bookmark. Hang on, where is it? HTML generator. No, the view demo. Here it is under dimensions. It's going to give you the dimensions. There's a view demo. Let's go ahead and click on that. And here you can see what it is. And this basically just puts some black lines around some things. But you can see that a 12 column grid, you've got to account for this negative space. Or This is typically what's known in design as the gutter in typography or page layout. And so the gutter is some negative space and it counts for a few pixels and specifically 20 because a 12 column grid is actually 940 pixels wide. You can see down here, here's the breakdown. A one column is going to be 60 pixels wide. So if you want to create an image, you know it needs to be 60 pixels wide if you want it to fit into a, excuse me, a one column. You know that an 11 column is 860, two column is 140, a 10 column is 780, so on and so forth. Three column is 220, nine column is 700. So if you're going to make images or anything that need to go with that, uh, um, that's a really good way to go. And it's just kind of an even spacing of things. And it also gives you the dimensions for the 16 column grid once you get down there. So I'll do one more movie to wrap this up and we'll talk about a few other things um, loose end wise. But that more or less is how you're going to use the 960 grid system.